So, bed levelling um, is really important because if the extruder is getting to different parts of the bed and it's at different heights, it won't be flush and you'll find that you won't get good adhesion of the plastic to the, the bed. Um, I'll run through later as well what looks like a good adhesion layer and how you can dial that in. But first off, let's go to leveling. Now with this machine, it came with little springs here and that's, they stock have springs. I've changed those over to little silicon washers and they're on every side because with these springs, you tend to find there's a little bit of movement in the springs and it will change your leveling over time. Whereas the silicon seems to be more rigid and you don't get that little fluctuation. Um, some people have said that when they get their bed level and they're using these little silicon washers, it stays level for six months. I'm still at the stage of not trusting my leveling and learning, so I just keep changing it to learn the process. But I would believe that they, they could do that. You know, they, they work nicely. Um, on the actual dials themselves, they have writing on them that says up or down. I mean, basically, if you imagine if you are tightening this screw, so uh, turning anti-clockwise, you will be squishing that washer and then moving the bed down. If you loosen it, the washer will be relaxing and the bed will go up. I mean, to be honest, people who get worried about the up and down thing, just move either way. I mean, I I play drums. I've played drums for many, many years. And when you're tuning a drum, you never just tune one way. What you do is you release and tune, release and tune. And what you're doing is you're feeling it. I mean... You, you, you know, even if you're undoing your work, you're feeling it. You're feeling where the tension is. But anyway, we'll move on to that in a minute. So I'm going to come out of the the move screen. Da -da. Let me see that. So that was the move screen, that, which was in settings, move. Now, the next thing that you, you must do when you're doing leveling is warm up the bed and the nozzle. So you go into... So this is the main screen temperature. Um, this is an interesting thing here, actually, that you can set to different modes. Um, if you are ever doing ABS, you need to select that. I think because it adjusts the temperatures, maybe. Anyway, we're on PLA. Um, but uh, you could switch the fan off as well and put it into cooling mode if you wanted to cool down the whole machine. Anyway. Back to what we need to do to do the bed leveling. So you go into manual. So because I've pressed PLA in the previous settings, it's actually started warming everything up um, to what it likes to use as presets for PLA. Now for this machine, I like putting the nozzle temperature at 200 and the bed temperature at 60. So what it will be doing is heating it up. And you can see these numbers going up. Now, if you had a problem where that wasn't happening, you might have either the thermistor is broken or something like that. I don't know. I'm sure I'd figure it out. But <laughs> that's, that's what you need to do. Now, the reason you have to do that first is because when you're leveling the bed, you need to make sure the machine is at its running temperature. Because as you get thing, as things heat up, they expand. So... If you did all your measurements of getting it all oh, nice and snug and everything and then you heated up the machine it would go out it will be even tighter and you might get that the nozzle starts hitting the glass plate and scratching it so now we go into leveling the bane of every 3d printer's life is leveling so um oh whilst we're here actually um Mm, actually no I'll do that a bit later that's that refill button that I mentioned that means that you can actually get the, the machine to pull filament through I don't know what disable motor does I don't know why language we're in English let's not change it anyway so we're over into leveling now I'll write all the stages of this what it's uh, doing now is it's just rehoming in case you weren't at home but always come back to home. I think that's the key motto of this machine. Always go to home before you turn off and when you turn on. Um, 
So it's just doing its business. Now, in this machine, I've tried to figure this bit out of putting auto leveling on and off. It's something to do with the BL touch being able to adjust the the level of the nozzle throughout printing when it's you know it's adjusting for the measurements it's taken where it'll be slightly out i don't think it works i think there's something maybe wrong with the firmware or something it doesn't work very well I probably need to update it and to be honest if you level your bed well you don't need the machine to do that for you it's really nice that this machine has this gubbins here and it has other uses I'm not, you know, disregarding it, but auto leveling, always keep it off. It's taken me hours trying to figure out if it's worthwhile. Just keep it off. Don't touch it. So the first thing you do is you're going to need to set your Z offset. Now the Z offset is, so if you imagine the bed is Z and the offset is how far away the nozzle is, from the Z axis and you want it to be really nice and snug and I'll show you why when you're printing the filament you want that perfect so you imagine as the nozzle is printing filament if it's printing from like here it will just come out like a, a nice slug that's not going to stick to anything you want it to be just snug enough that it does this you don't want it down here otherwise it will block the nozzle and drag and horrible you don't you don't want it like this, it's never going to adhere, but you want a nice little bit of squish. Um, there's lovely little pictures that show you that as well, but when we do our first print, we'll, we'll show you what I'm looking for. Um, you don't want it down here, squishy, squishy. You want it just a nice little drag line, and when you get that nice little curve, it's perfect. Now, I have got for my colleague David some feeler gauges, and in here, the ones that are similar to thickness of paper is about 0 0.04 millimeters and 0 0.05 I've actually found even though I've put these in after trial and error I prefer the paper method um, so I'm gonna do another video for this